assume you are okay. So what is SRAM, right? SRAM is the catch. We usually call catch, right? SRAM is just like uh, the, the, you, you put SRAM next to your logic unit and they can store their memory, that they can store the data. They are very close to your logic, so they are very fast, but they are not the register. Remember we talked about the uh, latch, the register earlier? Those timing registers are even faster than SRAM, they are, but they are very low density. They are just some uh, storage element in the finite state machine in your logic, right? To do pipelining, to do whatever, they are very fast, as fast as your logic, right? But they are very tiny. Maybe talking about, I don't think it's even kilobyte, maybe kilobyte, but they, they are not arranged in a ration in a way to store a lot of data, right? And they're bulky. Remember how many transistors you need to implement and register, right? The first version we had was, uh, we need to have the mass, we need to two, have two multipressor, right? Each of them is talking about maybe uh, two, two mass and then two inverter, right? That's eight transistor already. Then you have master slave, 16 transistor, Right? or even more than that, right? To implement one bit. That is very uh, area consuming, right? SRAM is a more structural uh, memory storage, right? So they are not like the register, uh, like locating anywhere throughout the logic. So what we do is that we usually will ha have them at least logically arrange a arrange it as a uh, different block. So first of all, you see that um, first we have the so-called word line, right? They have different word from zero all the way to N minus one. And then you have just one line going to here to adjust all of them. All this row belongs to word line zero one, word line zero. All this row be belong to one. If you remember, I already hinted here, these are called word line. You have many transistors, and then you need to adjust this by one wire, okay? So this is one thing. So, but however, how do I adjust into individual bit? Because you see this one has the block, and then I have, can have many block in parallel, right? So in reality, of course, it's not 3D, but this is the logic, you adjust them in this way, okay? It's just like, uh, I don't know what, any analogy, but um, you know, in some places, if you go to the street, you see the house number uh, numbering a lot in uh, it, not continuously. They might uh, start with one for this street, and then all the way to one hundred, but then the next street, uh, they might. I mean, this one may be uh, one. A1 to 100, next street will maybe B1 to 100, right? So A and B is like this uh, block, okay? So we also need to adjust the block. And at the same time, I need to adjust each individual column, okay? So we have a row, column, and block. So you have adjust. How do you adjust them? You are going to be, for example, I say I have a adjust that is one zero one zero zero one uh maybe let's say uh one zero one 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 zero one right this is one of the address right how this how many bits one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen I, I think I have some counting problem. So, so actually I would only want to put a 12 bit. So 12 bit, right? So how many, what is the size of the, the SRAM? Two to the power 16, which is at 12, two to the power six. So, sorry, this is 12, right? It is four kilobit. So this 12 bit can only adjust four kilobits of address, okay? But we might partition it into different groups. For example, here we might have four bits, 
right? For example, this can be one zero one zero. Okay, and here we also have four bits. So this one also maybe this particular one is one zero one one. Then you get this bit, and then maybe let me cheat a little bit. Just call this zero 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 zero. This block is zero, 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 zero. So by doing this, I can adjust this particular bit's content. Okay, so you have X decoder, you give it adjust one, zero, one, zero, then it will highlight, it will enable this bit. Right here, your column decoder, take the Y address. This is for example, X, Y, Z, right? Then you will take this bit. And then you have a broad decoder, here, right, you get zero, 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 then you get this what? Okay. Any questions? So our goal in this last let last chapter is this. We want to understand how they implement in general. We need to know, you need to pass the address, then you need to read it. And to read it is not easy. We need to how to know how to read it, how to write it. And also then what is the timing? How are going to time them? And also how do you detect the signal? Right, we are wanting it to be fast. We need something called sense amplifier. Okay, so you see I have a timing block so you can determine when to read it, when to charge up the bit nine and then uh, take the data and then get the, uh, amplify it and then send out to the global read write. Then you, you successfully read one bit from the register, from the SREM. Okay, any questions? Now, just keep this in mind, but let's uh, start understand what is SREM. SREM has six cells. If you read this carefully, you see that it is nothing but just a couple pair of inverter. Look at this. This is Q5. And this is Q6. Okay. And this is Q1, Q3. This is Q2, Q4. Do you see that? So basically, if I call this zero, for example, let's say I store zero at this node. This zero is the output of Q2, Q4, right? Yeah, so, so it actually, so in that case, I need to swap this uh, number. This should be Q2, Q4. This is Q1, Q3, right? So this is zero, right? Because the zero is here. Zero is connected to Q6. If the input is zero, this is zero. It means this is zero. Q3 gets zero, the output is going to be one, right? Because it's inverter. And then this is one, so this is one. So output should be zero. So it is a bi-stable storage animal we learned earlier. And they are regenerative, so they're very stable. That is how you store the transistor, okay? So what do we call? We call this pull-up transistor. We call the MOS pull down. It is easy to understand because when MOS is on, you pull the value to zero. When the PMOS is on, you pull the value to one, right? Pull up, pull down. Then what is Q5 and Q6? This is something we use to access the transistor. You store it, how do I read it? And how do I write it? So we call this, the access transistor. Is this okay? Any questions? Now you also see another three signals. One is word nine. You see the word nine connects to the gate of the access transistor. And think about this. If word nine is zero, access transistor will be off. It just like, this, trans, this cell is disconnected from the rest of the world. So if you look at this figure again, if 
only one word line is on, only all the row on this column will have effect because they are going to turn off the access transistor of all other rows. So their content is not going to be written or wrote or, 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 read, or, or read, right? Not going to be written or read. They cannot read it or write it. Is that clear? And you also see that while I'm storing zero and one, I have one and zero at the same time, just because of the nature. So that's why when we read out, we also have so-called bit nine and bit nine bar. This is bit nine and bit nine bar. And all depends on the convention, right? You just need to uh, make it very clear. What, how do you call it? You can call this bit nine bar or bit nine, right? If you call this bit nine, then it means this one stores zero for this cell because when you turn on the access transistor, you are putting zero to the bit nine. Okay, now you see that, again, the whole thing, what we want to do is reduce the area, right? So you can put more SRAM, reduce the power consumption, right? But at the same time, you need to make it robust to noise because I don't want to flip the data. And also I want to increase the speed, but even all of these are good, you need to make sure that they work. So the U is very important, right? For example, if you have a small area, you have small, less uh, capacitance, you have less power consumption, higher speed, but it also means that it's less robust. Okay, so this is an overview for those who never uh, heard about SRAM or uh, never try to look into the detail of SRAM. Any questions regarding this? Okay, if no, then uh, although I have two more, I should watch so many more. That's okay, I can put into the next lecture. Let's see how we read the SRAM, okay? How do we read the SRAM? To read the SRAM, the first thing is that you make to make sure it's not destructive. DRAM is destructive because you try to read it and then you not really destructive, but you may change the charge, but SRAM, at least you should not be destroyed. Forget about what I said about DRAM, but at least what I'm trying to say, when you read it, you don't overwrite it, right? So how do we read it? The first thing we charge everything to VDD. Okay. Now here I give an example. For example, this is one, this is zero. Assume you store this value, right? So the value is stored is one. How do we know it is one? When this is in this configuration, this is zero. It means this device is off, right? Because it's zero, MOS is off. And output is one here, it means PMOS is off, right? So as a result, this one, we just don't draw it for clarity. Is this okay? Now, before I read it, I'm going to pre-charge bit nine and bit nine bar to VDD, and then I turn on. So, this SS transistor and this SS transistor are on. And this is the goal. We are going to, this is VDD, right? And this is zero. And only these two are turned on. So there will be a current dro dropping from here. And then you have the IR drop, right? Let's withdraw the circuit for Q5. This is VDD, right? And this is word nine, which is equal to VDD. And this point is the point that I have zero plus delta V. I call it zero plus delta V, right? Remember, these are all MOS. And this is VDD because the content is one, right? So what will be the current going, what will be the voltage of this delta, this VX? Our goal is this, we want to uh, discharge the bit nine, right? Because this is just pre-charge. We want to discharge the bit nine bar so it goes down without flipping the content. Think about this, if Q5 is very strong, this one will become one 
just because of the voltage divider action, this becomes one. Then you were going to flip the contact, right? So we need to make Vx, which is delta V, to be smaller than the Vth of Q2. Right? Because this output is connected to here. If it is larger than the Vth of Q2, then I'm going to turn on this transistor and then this will become zero. And then the whole content will get free. Even I read it successfully, I modify the content of this one. Okay. So in order to do this, I need to follow this ratio. I try to derive a little bit next time. I think we are overrun. Okay. Any questions?